about the images that we're about to show you now, some of you might find them a bit distressing. Uh, rescuers are trying to save a number of whales washed up on a beach in New Zealand. This is one of the largest mass whale strandings in New Zealand's history. Look at that, it's very interesting. Conservation officials aren't sure what caused the whales to strand themselves. It's unprecedented, virtually. We went out and saw one of the biggest strandings I've ever seen. tonight. Thousands of dead bees are washing up on a popular beach in Naples and as you can see not just dead ones but ones that are alive too. A bee expert I spoke to on the phone today says this is very unusual behavior for the bees. A plague of vast proportions. Countless locusts have swarmed Bolivia causing the government to raise the alarm. But first, we start with this historic win. For the first time, artificial intelligence developed by Carnegie Mellon University has defeated the world's best professional poker players. In the United States, apparently, TVs have been spying on their owners. That sounds rather sinister. Uh, you know, you're not just watching your TV. Your TV could also be watching you. Federal regulators accuse Vizio of tracking TV viewing habits second by second on 11 million TVs. It wasn't just your viewing habits. They were combining all of this with all sorts of other information about you. Household income, sex, marital status. A really invasive picture was being put together. You know, you just have to be mindful that these things have the technology to transmit data and they could be doing it. All right, it is interesting, Tom. But lastly, as Daniel explained, it would be also a time of unprecedented or unparalleled and exponential change. Even the creators of this technology say that because it permanently changes our genes, it may carry terrible risks. Uh, meanwhile, another conservative group rejected from a college campus, this time at Santa Clara University in Northern California. The reason? Well, take a listen. Right now, there are a lot of people in this audience, a lot of people that are contacting me on my phone right now that just don't feel safe with this club being here. The amount of students that would feel unsafe. They are a direct threat to me. It's not infringing on your free speech to say we don't want this organization on campus. They don't want that organization on campus. When we stand for free markets in the Constitution, I'm still trying to figure out how that makes college students feel unsafe. But uh, they found some backwards, reverse engineering way to see, see that we standing for freedom somehow makes them feel unsafe. And because of that, they've barred our organization from existing and our students' right to assemble. And look, a university is supposed to be a place where disagreement, the free flow of ideas happen, right. where people can say, I, I respect your opinion, but I respectfully disagree. Universities are no longer those places. They are really islands of totalitarianism, where if you disagree with the faculty, the professors, the administration, or the left-wing students on campus, you can't respectfully disagree. You will be silenced, you will be suppressed, and you will be called a racist. Tonight, the city of Buffalo is taking action now in the case of a mother who was arrested for trying to homeschool her own children. This is utterly, utterly unacceptable. She filed the proper paperwork to homeschool her two children, but less than a month later, she says she was arrested for educational neglect. Harris says she hasn't seen her children in three weeks. But it wasn't just the students. There were members right. of the staff from that university who came out and talked against you. You know, the left hates the idea that there are other ideas. And they're trying to really silence anybody sure. on campus that might disagree with their leftist worldview. This is a very dangerous precedent to be set. Doctors across the UK have been told not to call pregnant women expectant mothers in case they offend transsexual people. issued by the British Medical Association instructs staff to use the term pregnant people instead. A recent BBC documentary highlighted the dangers of endorsing the view that people can be trapped in the wrong body. Transgender kids, who knows best, 
featured Lou, who became convinced by pro-trans activists she had to transition or die. And knowledge will increase, and the increase there implies exponential knowledge increase. In other words, that knowledge throughout human history has stayed pretty level until the time in which we live. It's estimated that the amount of information, just published information, has increased in the last 50 years by 200 trillion times, which is a pretty amazing growth in information. Rapid advances are being made in the field of artificial intelligence as the world prepares for the fourth industrial revolution. And we are now in what we call the fourth stage of the industrial revolution or Revo industrial revolution 4.0 is the way we refer to it since everything seems to be taking on computer technology. Where really it's an opening of Pandora's box where the devices in your physical environment can be used to generate attacks into your technology environment. And oh, by the way, it, it works vice versa. People can now use computers from faraway systems to attack your Internet of Things devices, your, your, the locks on your doors, your HVAC and air conditioning systems, your refrigeration systems. You can do all sorts of really scary things in this new, in this new world. Well, this is just dandy. Except Amazon is opening up their first smart store this year in Seattle. The first of what's going to be 20 grocery stores. Online shopping giant Amazon has rolled out its first ever bricks and mortar store. I love this. Do you love this? Mm. Well, really? it's, it's going to be a big thing. It's a, a game changer. Uh, it's taking the grocery game to a new level. No checkouts, no queues, no money. Now, the store they're trialing in Seattle is exactly that. It's the cashless store. So you or I will go in, we'll purchase our groceries, it, Amazon will have all our data, and we'll just stroll and out. Just walk and, out. And, they will simply register as they come through, whether it's through a handprint, a palm print, through eye recognition, because half of you actually in this room are already in the federal government's database. Your facial recognition has already been recorded. 50% of Americans. So that essentially they have all sorts of different platforms that they can use to recognize who you are. That, that you go in the store and exactly it works the same way. And as again, Amazon said they're gonna open 200 of these stores. How many people work in these stores? A couple. A technician and somebody to make sure that there's law and order. That's it. It's going on and on. I mean, it's... Uh, <laughs> uh, but I find also there's this whole issue we talk about the smart grid. And, and it's an interesting idea that we talk about living in the world of the Internet of Things. I don't know if you're familiar with that term. Well, the Internet of Things, we all see it, right? Our toaster, our refrigerator can be connected. But over and over, we're seeing more devices that people are wearing. See, currently IPv4, which is the system that runs most Internets, uh, only has 4 billion addresses. And you realize we have over almost 7 billion people on the planet. That means that address is assigned to whatever device you're using, whether it's your, your smartphone or your laptop, or your computer at home or whatever it is. It has an IP address that's your address and it sends everything that's for you to that address and that's how you get your email. So they said we need to expand that and it's really developing beyond anything I can really comprehend into IP version 6, which is an interesting number. But this is where the Internet of Things comes into being because instead of having you, each, each computer having its own address, it turns out that every thing has an address, including you. In other words, when you go and, and, and sit down at a computer in a hotel in some place, all you have to do is simply put your hand on the scanner or your thumb on the scanner and immediately it downloads all of your information. That computer now becomes your computer. You don't have to log in, you don't have to log out. It's yours, everywhere you go. All of us already are cyborgs. Um, so you have a machine extension of yourself in the form of your, your phone and your computer and all your applications. You are already superhuman, but by far you have more more power, more capability than the President of the United States had you know, 30 years ago. Um, if you have an internet link, uh, you, you have an oracle of wisdom, you can communicate to millions of people, you can communicate to the rest of Earth instantly. 
Exactly, but you realize that smartphones are really smart. They're smarter than you are. So that even our accessing of information has changed. Um, I mean, these are magical powers uh, that didn't exist not that long ago. So everyone is already superhuman uh, and a cyborg. Even like people like Google are using it to sort your information. It's a little bit creepy, isn't it? I mean, I, I was looking for a, a hotel in Amsterdam, and and I finally I just clicked on said send me price updates on this one particular good deal, and every so often it just pops up. But that's even worse. I was looking for a, a piece of computer, uh, basically a USB charger, and now I get. Wherever I look, I get pop-ups on the side of my sh page showing me somebody's USB charger that I didn't even ask to look at, but it's interesting. So that it knows me, it's learning me, it has re remembered everything that I do, and it's searching out and continu continually communicating with me. And that's happening to all of us. It's pretty frightening if you get a chance sometime to get a look at what they know about you. We're already moving towards a cashless society. In the future, you may be getting rid of more than just your wallet. One day, you may not even need your phone. New cashless technologies on the horizon will let you make payments with just your fingerprint. Uh, International Business Times has said basically, our children born today will be the first cashless generation the Guardian says in Sweden today, only 2% of transactions are made by cash, and they expect that to go to a half a percent by the end of this year. Because money is no longer money, now it's digits. Which is what makes John's prophecy, I think, so very profound in its details, because he describes an economic system that is only possible today. And they've begun to develop what they call tech tattoos. In the not-so-distant future, you could be wearing all of your personal information, everything from your credit card numbers to your vital signs. It's called the tech tattoo. It also can be used in banking, saying that keeping financial information attached to your skin would be less vulnerable than inside a loose wallet. It's a platform that basically turns you into a human circuit board, he said. This isn't science fiction. I mean, this is already technology that's in place. He said the supra, supranational sovereignty. In other words, this is a sovereignty, a governorship, a rulership of the world that's above nations. Sovereignty that's ruled by an intellectual elite and world bankers. Okay, that's the picture. Well, I think that uh, over the last many years, people have talked about how technology is going to replace people. It's actually happening now. And I don't think that many companies, uh, and I don't think uh, the public, is really set up for this. That artificial intelligence and robotics will lead to the elimination, the estimate is it's going to lead to the elimination in the next 20 years or let's say by 2030, which is less than 20 years. Get this, it's gonna to lead to the elimination of two billion jobs. Half the world's total jobs. Toy robots, educational robots, industrial robots, and domestic robots. The range here is extraordinary. A grill bot can now clean your barbecue. A lawn bot can cut the grass. There's even a famous robot. And of course, it's the advances in humanoid robots, which really grab the attention. The Guardian, uh, a London paper said, in short, there's a strong continuous correlation between the rich getting richer and the poor making that the 90% going deeper into debt. In fact, PBS NewsHour had an interesting article. They said that there are 80 people in the world, 80 people, 80 people, I'm talking about this little section over here. 80 people who own 50% of the world's assets. 80 people who own half of everything there is in the world. People are willing to trade freedom, power and freedom and liberty, for safety, security. They're willing to do it. They've done it throughout history.
money's not evil, it's what people do with it. It's a love of money that becomes the evil. The technology is not evil, it's what people do with the technology that becomes evil. And what I'm saying is the Antichrist is going to usurp this technology to create this system whereby he can control the universe. And so for those of you who just are doing online banking, don't panic, you're not worshiping the Antichrist. But understand, it's a sign of what's coming and there will become a day where people will be given that choice. I go back to what Peter said. If these things are so, what manner of people ought we to live? Or how should we live? How are we living, Lord? Are we living like people who think that things are just going to continue on forever and nothing's going to change? Or are we realizing that we're living in the ends of history as we know? It?